Hi everybody, today we're working on a 2001 Mazda MPV with a 2.5 liter V6 motor. We're replacing the valve cover gaskets. This car, the valve cover on the rear of the motor is leaking oil. Removing these valve covers requires removing the intake manifold, the throttle body, and a couple other parts, so we'll dig right in. I've never worked on this particular motor before, and as I always like to do before digging in, I just quickly look over the motor and kind of orient myself with how the thing is put together. First we'll disconnect these two hoses on the top of the intake manifold. Uh, you can push down on a little clip at the same time as pulling up and they come right out. Next I'll remove the throttle body inlet as well as some of the hoses and wiring clips that are around the intake. There are quite a few connectors so if you're not good at remembering where things go, if you're not good at making a mental note, you might want to label things, take some pictures, or otherwise come up with some aids to help you remember how to put stuff back together. I'm now starting to disconnect the throttle body. There's a bracket for the throttle cable connectors that is in the way of one of the bottom bolts that holds the throttle body on, so we'll need to remove this connector from the intake manifold before we can remove the bolts that hold the throttle body. The bracket is held on by three 10 millimeter bolts. Now we'll remove this 12 millimeter bolt which holds the air box. There's a bunch of wires and hoses going into the back of the air box, so I just lifted it up enough to get the uh, throttle body inlet hose off of the throttle body. Now I have access to the last uh, bottom bolt holding the throttle body onto the intake manifold and the throttle body just kind of falls away from the intake manifold nice and easy. Next we'll disconnect the small activator vacuum hose that's connected into the bottom of the exhaust gas recirculation valve. At this stage I'm going to loosen up the intake manifold bolts here so I can kind of loosen things up and get a better idea of what's connected to what. Then I just kind of lift up gently on the intake manifold and see what moves together with it and what doesn't. It looks like there's a few bits along the back here that will need to come out as well. There's a couple of wiring connectors and hoses back here. These bolts are holding the exhaust gas recirculation valve onto the intake manifold. A metal gasket will fall out when you pull the second bolt out, so be prepared for that. It'll fall completely under the car. Just get under there and look for it. There's a large diameter hose behind the EGR valve. It's really brittle, so be very careful when you disconnect it. There's one additional vacuum line underneath the throttle body. You can just push this on off. And now we can re maneuver the intake manifold out of the car, just going real slow, making sure there's nothing still connected to it that we forgot to disconnect. And it's clear. This car has about 105,000 miles and a lot of carbon buildup on the throttle body and on some of these intake uh, ports here, so I'll just do my best job I can to clean them up before I reassemble everything. I'm using carbon choke cleaner here to spray in there and clean things up. For some of the tougher deposits I'm using a brush with really soft bristles that are made out of brass that won't scratch aluminum. Now we can start removing the various boxes and connections that are on top of the valve covers. Next I'll remove the cover which is over the water pump belt which is driven off the back side of the engine here. There's one small wiring bracket at the back end of the valve cover. We'll take this off as well. Next we'll pull each of the spark plug wires and then uh, put the wiring up out of the way.
There's a couple of wires running along the front side of the valve cover and they have little um, clips which hold it onto each of the front valve cover bolts. We'll need to just pull these up and out of the way. We'll disconnect the rear spark plug wiring as well. Next to remove is the coil pack. This one's held with a 7mm bolt. Okay, we can finally start removing each of the valve cover bolts. These are 10 millimeter heads. Uh, some of them have studs coming out through the middle and some are a little bit hard to access. So you'll want to have a deep drive 10 millimeter as well as a regular 10 millimeter socket and a wobble extension or also a universal joint. A set of ratcheting wrenches is a real great tool to have as well if you don't already have one. I'll post a link in the description below to some of these tools. You can buy them on Amazon. Alright, the valve cover head is starting to come loose. Uh, there's a couple of silicone beads around the corners of the gaskets. So it's a little bit sticky and you'll have to kind of pry and pull to get it to break free from the cylinder head. It might feel almost as if it's still being held down by some fasteners, but it's probably just the sealant holding it in place, so just keep tugging and pulling and eventually it will come out. Now we'll start working on the back head. I apologize for the camera angle here, it's a little bit hard to see. There's a whole bunch of pesky wiring running along the front side of the head here. I found it easier to um, disconnect a, a few of the connectors to give the wire a little bit of slack. Uh, otherwise it, it tended to run right on top of where the bolts were. There's a black box here running across two of the bolt heads on the back side on the rear of the valve cover. Um, also it's held by a couple of 10 millimeter bolts, 10 millimeter nuts. Uh, but these are not the nuts that are fastening down the valve cover, so once you remove the black box, there's a couple of uh, studs un underneath it that need to be removed. And with that, the valve cover is finally free and can be removed from the car. I'll go through with a scraper and clean up the spots where there's some sealant attached to the, the cylinder head surface here. The sealant is at the front of the motor in between the the head surface and the timing covers and also along the back uh, right at the um, power takeoff for the water pump belt pulley. We're installing a new Felpro valve cover gasket set. I'll post a link in the description for where you can buy this part. This set includes the valve cover gaskets themselves as well as seals for each of the spark plug tubes and also rubber grommets for each of the um, bolts that go through the corners of the head. So really simple, we just squeeze the new ring uh, seals and the gasket right on there. It's a little bit loose, it's not super tight so it's probably a good idea to clean it up as best you can to get rid of any remaining oil. That'll kind of help the parts to stay in place when you turn everything upside down to put it back onto the engine. These little guys aren't very much fun to install. You have to pry the old grommets off of the bolts. I'm using a, a pick tool. I guess you could also just cut them in half and then squeeze the new grommets on, on, in place onto each of them. And there's, there's a whole bunch of bolts for each head, so this is kind of a tedious part of the job. Now we can put the valve cover back in place, making sure that the gaskets don't fall out and that there's no foreign objects such as wires between the cylinder head and the, and the valve cover surface. Until you start putting the valve cover bolts in, it, the valve cover will slide around in relation to the head uh, and it will center itself as you tighten it down. Just keep track of which bolt goes where. Some of them have studs on the top for mounting various accessories and some of them are, some of them are just flat bolts.
Now we'll just continue installing stuff in reverse order.